Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I've got two replays in the Mercenary Tier 9 Premium Medium Tank, the Teeth Breaker STB-1. One of the Warhammer light tanks that have, well one of the Warhammer Mercenary tanks that have come out recently. And the Teeth Breaker is one of those that I will call a Marmite tank. I think there will be a fair few people who will really enjoy this tank for the meme value. But I think there's a lot of people who will get really annoyed at playing this tank because there's... A lot of nuances to play in this thing. Number one, that is just this gun. As you can see, it start opening up. This gun is basically like a 57mm. It's basically like the tier 9 version of the AMX 1357. In that it has a rather large clip for its tier. But it has low damage and it spits out the rounds very, very, very fast. So, yeah, it only does 80 damage a round. But as, again, as you can see, it fires very, very quickly. Which means that you don't get the opportunity at times to say like any other general light tank. By the way, that ram, that is so satisfying. <laughs> this, this kill on this light, that is satisfying. Sorry, pointers. But yeah, it, does, it means that you generally don't get the opportunity to get that one shot off for like 150 or 240 damage, I mean, especially when you get into tier 9 in terms of light tanks, you're getting like 240, 250 alpha in general on most of those tanks, so you don't get the opportunity to do that in one shot. Most of the time you get the opportunity to fire one shot and then the tank starts looking at you and then that's a bad time for you, right? Which can be pretty damn awkward. And yeah, especially with this tank being basically the STB-1 hull, it's really, really large because it's a medium tank chassis, but it's been made into a light tank. So it's really, really easy for the enemy to hit you. And you get snapshot a hell of a lot in this tank, even if you're going at full speed, which is a big, big problem for the tank because it is a medium tank, not a light tank chassis. So it's naturally a big, big target. The Teeth Breaker does have two modes as well. It's like exactly like the French Wheelie Boys in the two modes that it has. And that is the travel mode and the fight mode. Whatever you want to call it. And that basically means that you can use... For me, it's right on the D-pad. It might be different for you depending on your controller setup. It's the same button that you'd use for siege mode. And naturally for the wheelie boy mode changing. And that is that, you, as you can see, when you're in this travel mode, you go really quickly. You go up to 75 kilometers an hour. But your gun handling becomes tragic. But if you switch out of it, you go down to 65 kilometers an hour and your gun handling becomes far, far better. Trade-offs. That's one of the things that this tank does have that you might have noticed as you've seen running around. It's one of its little gimmicks. But yeah, on the whole, for me, I personally am not the biggest fan of it because I feel like I could do better in most of the other light tanks. The gimmick is quite funny at times when you do, it's really satisfying when you do get to have those full clips off at people. But on the whole, I ha haven't really enjoyed this tank all that much. I've had some pretty decent games, which is what you're going to see in these two replays. But yeah, I haven't enjoyed it as much as some of the other light tanks at the tier. And for the amount of gold it is, I'm not sure whether it's worth it. I mean, that's completely down to you personally, you know, whether you enjoy it or not, or enjoy the play style, or whether you can make it work. But you see, when you start unloading on people and getting those shells, it is really nice. And this is why I call it the Marmite tank, because a lot of people won't be able to make this tank work whatsoever. Just because of the play style, and they'll be hesitant to just fire one shot and get out, or fire like three or four out of the clip and then run. They'll want to sit there and fire the whole clip. And a lot of the time, you just don't get the opportunity to do that. You just get wrecked pretty damn easily, unfortunately. And it's it's probably quite a high skill ceiling to be able to get the most out of this, th this vehicle, realistically. So in terms of a crew on the Teeth Breaker, I run Born Leader, Rapid Reload, Sixth Sense, Situational Awareness, Camouflage Expertise, Dead Eye, Snapshot, Run and Gun, and Steady Aim. The three gun perks to make this gun as good as humanly possible because it is a bit derpy at times and it can be really annoying. The camouflage expertise because you are a light tank. Great driving, by the way. Because you are a light tank and I want to make the camo better. And Dead Eye, and I can hear you all going, Dead Eye? What? Because this tank spits out the rounds so, so quickly that Dead Eye will increase my chance of basically setting people on fire and doing module damage and stuff like that by 6%, and I like having that meme, it's a bit of a meme, it if you 
didn't really want to run Deadeye, you could quite easily get rid of it and put on Muffled Shot or something like that to make your camouflage better. I'd say I run it because every single shot that goes in, because you're firing a lot of bullets and you're going to be, you know, hitting them a lot, very, very, very rapid succession, every, you know, every round that hits them has a 6% higher chance of setting them on fire, burning them through their fuel tanks or their engine, ammo racks, etc, etc. So that's why I do it. Mean value. But, again, you could just take muffled shot or something like that. It's, it's completely down to you. And in terms of equipment, I do run camouflage net, optics, and the vert stabs. Vert stabs to make the gun as good as humanly possible again while on the move and stuff like that. Optics to be able to spot for myself and the camo net to make my camouflage better because I'm a light tank and you don't have the best camo in the universe. So, as you can see with that first game, we finished the victory, the four kills, 3.7k damage, 1926 base XP with 2.6k assistance, the ace tanker, and yeah, generally pretty nice game for the Teeth Breaker on Corellia in a t 10 game. And the one thing that, again, another thing that lets down this tank is the penetration on the gun. And that is the fact that you have 216 pen on your AP and 236 pen on your premium APCR. Well, it's standard. It's premium APCR as well, I think. But standard and premium APR, APCR, whatever. But yeah, so only 216 pen on your APCR on the standard is not nice. And that leads to you spending a lot of credits in firing a lot of premium because 236 pen, even 236 pen isn't that nice at tier 9. And with the amount of tier 10 games that tier 9 see in general, you basically will struggle to pen a lot of things with that 216. You've basically just going to struggle. <laughs> it's just the way it is. And if you fire the premium, that's going to help you a lot more in doing what you want to do. And by the way, it's 62 kilometers an hour top speed, not 65 kilometers an hour without the travel mode. But yeah, side point. So as you can see in this first game, we, sorry, the second game, the second game is the one we're on and we're on Siegfried line. And on Siegfried line at the minute, I've taken this very aggressive position here on this mid mid ridge to be able to try and spot the enemy team that spawned in these positions here that happens on encounter generally. And I did this and I didn't, ex I expected to find quite a few things, but not as many things that ended up sitting with me, which has made this very, very awkward, especially for the type of tank that this teeth breaker is, because as you can see, it's very, very tempting to sit up on top of the ridge and start unloading on things, but it can lead to your hit points dwindling very, very fast. So what you're going to see is basically me poke up, go bang, bang, and then pull back and stuff like that, because I don't want to sit up on top of the ridge lines for too much to let the enemy team get those shots in. Now the one thing that this tank feels weird with its gun is that it has 1200 meters a second shell velocity on the rounds but it never feels like it. It always feels like even though I'm shooting directly in front of a tank and they are you know pretty damn close any other gun that had like 1200 meters of shell velocity would be hitting the shells that this tank just misses and they all seem to land behind the tank. I don't know, the gun physics feel a little bit odd, a little bit off of where the shells go from when you're fired. I don't know if anyone else has experienced that with this tank. There's a few other tanks that have to do it. I can't think of them off, off this point. But there's a few other tanks, and the mostly Cold War tanks, to be honest, that I've played and gone, why do the shells do that? The AMX-13 SS-11 is one of those. But yeah, it's one of those that the, the gun, even though I'm aiming in front of tanks and I've got 200 meters of shell velocity and, you know, they're pretty close, they seem to still fly behind them anyway, whereas, like I say, other tanks that may have that similar velocity would hit them. I don't know, it's, maybe it's an optical illusion with the how fast the shells fly out the gun as well and just basically the, the accuracy getting worse with spamming the trigger, essentially. Who knows? But as you can see, we have managed to get 2.4k damage so far with 1800 assistance. That Type 5 Heavy that went across the open is a godsend. Thank you very much, sir, for giving me a lot of your hit points. But as you can see, we're still spotting. We got 2.3k spotting as well as the 2.4k damage. And we're just waiting for the reload to come in before we get a couple of shots into the Sent 7-1 if we can. And as you can see, we end up taking a hit from directly in front of us by that E50 who poked out. It's slowly but surely bleeding hit points that we'll need to keep poking to give us the option to, and the ability to poke without, you know, re 
without the ability to think, oh God, I'm going to die if I take a hit and I have to play far, far more cautiously. But we are trying our best. We end up getting a bit more assistance again on the 50 and the medium tank that's poking. We just got to keep spotting them up. Keep the targets lit up for our friends and hope that our friends do keep blasting because that's the best thing for us. But unfortunately, there's an FV215B in the middle that manages to copper shot at us, which actually puts us down to a one shot now for a lot of the tanks. And I'm watching that middle road now because that middle road has me concerned. The T95E6 did some silly things and rushed straight over. He did manage to do some damage to some of them, but unfortunately that's cost me a tier 10 medium tank that was backing me up. They get a little bit ballsy though with the death of the E6 and try and come over and get me. Fortunately enough, they, their E6 ended up getting tracked and then obliterated. We're up to nearly 4k spotting and we're just going to keep poking. Keep poking, keep trying to spot them. And there you can see there's the object 140. Now he's just fired and he was tracked in an awkward position. I thought, you know what, I'm going to try and be cheeky and see if I can get more shots into this guy before he gets his gun on target and before I take a hit. But now he started looking at us, we pulled back. It's again, it's finding the opportunity to start firing. And the moment you think that something could come over and start shooting you, get out of dodge. Don't take the hit. Don't be tempted to just sit and unload the clip because that will lead to bad things. So we get a nice shot into the bat chat, but the second shot missed. And again, that's the type of shot where most of the light tanks are basically way better than this thing for that sort of thing. And that is the fact that... The others would have shot that guy and done 240 damage. I only did 80 for my opp one opportunity to shoot him. Fortunately enough, though, the 140 was poking enough around the corner so I could get shots through his upper and lower plate. But until that, it pulled forward. He couldn't actually see me because his turret wasn't quite right on the corner. And his view viewing ports weren't there to see me. And we managed to end up finishing that guy off with a fire. The bat chat's not going. It's like, hello, Mr. Bat Chat. Okay, if you want to go, sir, I'll try and get some shots into you and he's not actually lighting us up so we're just trying to get the shots and lead the shots into him they're not quite going in we do get another shot in you can see we're just trying to lead the shells and we do manage to get another one in before he charges into our heavy tank now there's the 268 version 5 that's directly in front of us and it's like, right, okay, you know what? We're going to try and get some shots into this guy. But this is going to be kind of awkward. Again, he's not poking around the corner anywhere near enough to actually spot us. So which means we get a few cheeky shots into his lower plate, which is nice. And now we're going to flank round behind this 268 version 5. We've switched into the travel mode, which will help us get up to 75 kilometers an hour so that we can speed up behind this guy and start firing the shots. He ends up taking some hits, which means he's only really a two shot for me, or well, three shot. And we managed to shut him down. Now there's only one tank left on the enemy team. It is a tank destroyer. And it's like, hang on a minute. It's a Gorilla 15, and he's sitting in this corner. So we start pummeling the shots into this guy. As you can see, it's not the most accurate in the universe when you just hold the trigger down at distance, because it is a fairly inaccurate gun. But we do manage to set him on fire a little bit, get a fair bit of damage, and good times. We're up to 5.2k damage and 4.3k assistance. We switch into... Well, we haven't switched into the speed mode. We're still going. And we're going to try and spot this Gorilla, because as soon as we spot him, he's going to end up giving us a lot of assistance. But unfortunately, he outspots us, and we can't see him. And I thought he was tucked right into the corner, which he actually is. And unfortunately, I just didn't spot him because of the tree that was knocked down and camo. And yeah, we didn't manage to get any more damage on that guy. But we do finish with two kills, 5.2k damage, 4.3k assistance, the ace tanker, the scout medal, the confederate, 1991 base XP. A really, really nice game, again, for the Teeth Breaker Mercenary Warhammer light tank. It's one of those that can be fun, but can be deeply frustrating at other times. I think it will be down to the user whether they'll actually enjoy this tank or not. It is down to you to decide. So as always, everybody, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.